Sinpaş Kızılbük Marmaris Presents Biri Bir Gün Assalamu alaikum Erenler and those who have attached their hearts to Erenler even those who love those who attach their hearts to Erenler in the third episode we have added a third option as a door of salvation why to be one of the Erenler is an uphill battle Allah stated astaidu billah ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqin o you who believe fear Allah and be with the truthful if Allah had told us to be among the truthful it would have been a debt upon each of us to be among the Erenler meaning the truthful ones and because we wouldn't be able to pay the debt we would have been at a loss but Allah the Almighty has made it easy for us because he loves us he says be with the truthful okay being together with them is a precious thing but it's not so easy either it's a heavy burden as in the poem if you are afraid of dying stay away don't enter the battlefield how many people are sacrificed in this square no one ever asks you cannot give your heart to Erenler just by saying you did so okay we couldn't become one of the Erenler and we can't be it said there are five pillars of Islam if there was a sixth it would be to know thyself we know our place so we couldn't become one of Erenler being one of those who have attached their hearts to Erenler it's not easy either but in this ephemeral world let's at least be among those who love being among those is a very precious door to salvation it's a locksmith it's a rope to hold on to for those who appreciate it our beloved prophet said al mar'u ma'a man ahabba a person is with the one he loves what does it mean whoever you want to be with in the hereafter love them in this world whoever you love the most in this world you will be with them in the hereafter now let's start by greeting those who love those who have attached their hearts to Erenler let's ask our question right away you are walking down the street on your own suddenly someone appears in front of you he hands you the microphone and asks a question he says do you want to be a sultan or a servant how would you answer what would our answer be i well i actually want to be a servant i don't think anyone will say this everyone wants to be a sultan why it is precious you have people under your command you can do anything you want you have the seal you are suleiman but if you are a slave a sultan commands you to do it and you obey he says come and go you obey how does that compare no comparison the subject of today's biri birgun is exactly this which one is better being a sultan or a servant you'll say mr serda of course being a sultan is valuable but some disagree with you who for example our yunus disagrees he says there is a servant at thy door deep inside the sultan what about this for example yavu sultan selim khan disagrees with you to be the sultan is nothing but a futile struggle to be in the service of a wali is better than anything else says his majesty the great sultan of the world says that what you call the sultanate of the world is just a futile struggle but he says that it is precious to be the servant of a wali my friends najib fazl disagrees with you as well what about this now he says imagine what an exalted rank i aspire to for i am the servant of his servant his slave subhanallah this is what the ustad says about sayyid abdul hakim arwasi one more person disagrees with you who himid dede i am here today to tell you the story of himid dede who disagrees with you once upon a time not in your time not in my time but in a very good time a long time ago when mice ran after cats and lions were chased by rats long long ago when there was less noise and more green in such a time a beautiful man worked day and night longing for a single dream a whole lifetime has passed and he has only one aspiration and he had never been able to fulfill it every year himid dede would sit in a corner bow his head supplicate after prayer and make an intention in his heart i intend to go to hajj for the sake of allah let's take a break it is the sunna of our prophet in order to follow this sunna the honorable aulia intend to go to hajj or umrah every year because if a person sincerely wants to go in his heart even if the conditions don't allow him to go even if he cannot go even if it is not possible 
he will be recorded in the book of deeds as if he had gone, you know. When you die and the good deeds and sins are weighed in the judgment square, you see, oh, there are 60 pilgrimages in the scale of good deeds. Embarrassed, you say, oh Allah, I didn't perform this many pilgrimages. They say, well, you had intended to do this. Your intentions were deemed acceptable as if you had performed pilgrimage. That's why these are here. Is it because he knew this sunnah or because he really wanted to go deep in his heart? Every year he would intend to go to Hajj. He would bow his head and say, Oh Allah, I intend to perform Hajj for your sake. He would wait for that time. But when the Hajj season came, every year, for one reason or another, Himit Dede could not go to Hajj. He is an old man. He has only one wish in this ephemeral world. Let me go, Ya Rab. Let me enter the door of the Masjid al-Haram. Let me pray as soon as I see the Kaaba. Let me cling to the cover of the Kaaba. Let me weep, beg, and plead. Let me sit on the threshold of Rauda al-Tahira, recite Surah al-Yusuf and Surah al-Kaf, thinking that our Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam loved them and bow my head. This was his wish, but it was never fulfilled. Sometimes Allah does not grant, but can we give up our wish because Allah didn't grant it? Never. Why? For Allah grants, when we say, I am weak, great is you, great is the glory of the giver, ask as much as you want. If Allah didn't want to give something to a servant, he wouldn't give that servant the desire for that thing. Here is a hint. If Allah makes you want something, it is because he wants to give it to you. Ask for it, but don't exaggerate it either. Ibrahim Haki of Erzurum says, do not wish for something. If it happens... Don't be stubborn. It's from Al-Haq. Do not reject it. Let's see what Allah will do. Whatever He wills is good. We made him at Dede wait too long, didn't we? He wanted to go to Hajj for years, but he couldn't go yet. That year, he opened his hands to Allah Almighty again and prayed, O oh Allah, I intend to go to Hajj for your sake, but I am not able to perform an acceptable and meritorious pilgrimage. I am a helpless and weak servant. You know your servant better than your servant, O Lord. I can't do this. But I'm going there to guide people on the road, to give water to those in need, to solve the problems of people. Himet Dede got the point. This is how great people go to Hajj. Not like a hero. I intend to go to Hajj for the sake of Allah. How will you go? One day someone came to Sheikh Shibli and said, Ya Sheikh, I have come back from Hajj. These are my gifts for you. Then Sheikh Shibli asked, Have you circumambulated the Kaaba? I did. Well, did you see the angels circumambulating the Kaaba without stopping in the line ascending from the Kaaba to Al Bayt al Mamur? No, I haven't. Then you haven't seen the Kaaba. Did you do that? Yes, I did. Did you see that? I didn't. Then you didn't do that either. So the man realized that he had neither stoned the devil nor circumambulated, nor performed farewell tawaf, nor performed hajj, nothing. Therefore, those who know the method would make their intention like him at Dede, knowing that they cannot perform the hajj properly. Oh my Lord, I am not able to perform hajj properly. I'm weak and incapable, but I'm coming to obey your order. Why am I coming? Maybe there is an old man when he is getting on the airplane. Of course, there were no airplanes in him at Dede's time, but there is now. An old man gets on the plane. He can't carry his suitcase. You are in the same group. You'll approach him and say, let me help you. You'll carry his suitcase. The old man will say, Son, may Allah be pleased with you. You'll see a thirsty old man circumambulating the Kaaba. He's in the tawaf, so he can't turn around to drink water. You will fill a glass of zamzam and say, Here you are. He'll say, May Allah be pleased with you, son. You will struggle to enter the garden of paradise in Rauda al-Tahira. You will eventually enter and sit in the garden of paradise. While worshipping, you'll see a sad person because he couldn't get in. In your heart, you will say, even if I worship here for hours, it will be nothing. But if someone says, may Allah be pleased with you to me sincerely, it is worth the hours of my worship here, you will immediately call him. Brother, come here. What is it? Come, I'll get up. You sit here. It's too crowded in there. There's no place to sit. You'll get up. The old man will come and sit there. He'll turn around and say, may Allah be pleased with you. The heart is the throne of Allah. Allah looked into the heart. Miserable in both worlds, whoever destroys the heart, the heart is precious. The heart, he says, Kaaba bunyad khalil adarast dil nadargah jalil akbarast. It means 
The Kaaba is a building built by Khalil, son of Azar. The heart is the place where Allah, the exalted, looks. To receive a sincere prayer of an owner of heart is better than circumambulating the Kaaba a thousand times. Himid Dede knew this. He made his intention and began to wait excitedly. What is he waiting for? He is waiting for the day when the caravans will go to Baghdad. Back then it wasn't like it is today. Now, you get on the plane from here. Two or three hours later, you're in Jeddah or in Medina Tul Munawara. You can't even get in the mood. It wasn't like this in the past. Those who know will remember. It used to be a two or three week journey by bus. But in Himet Dedi's time, a Hejaz caravan would set off from every town. They would all come together and go to Baghdad. A single and large Hajj caravan would be gathered in Baghdad and set off for Haramain. It is so easy today, right? You may say, it is not so easy today, Mr. Serdar. Today we're waiting for our name to be drawn. You wait for the lottery and your name doesn't come up for a long time. Some people wait for 10 years, some wait for 15 years. Back then there was no such a waiting process. Anyone who wanted to could go, but it would take three months. This is how it is. As in the quote, I cannot find you alone to offer you my condition. I can never find myself who will find you alone. No, you can't have two beauties at the same time. When you are alone and your heart is ready, the beloved is not alone, is too busy. And sometimes the beloved is ready. He says, let my lover come and tell me something. But right at that time, your heart is crowded. You may not be able to go and see him. A man from Shan Lurfa signed himself up for Hajj. Four or five years later, the man's name is still not drawn. The man checked the results. Again, his name wasn't on the list. He said, God damn that Nimrod. People asked, what does this have to do with Nimrod? He said, if Nimrod had not persecuted Prophet Ibrahim so much, he wouldn't have gone. And the Kaaba would be in Shan Lurfa now. So we would easily go to Hajj. Let's go back to him at Dede. He made his intention again that year and he finished his preparations. He was waiting for the day when the Hajj caravan would set off for Baghdad. Just four or five days before the caravan was to leave, Himit Dede fell ill. He's coughing, he's in pain, lying in a fever. He doesn't have the strength to travel. Poor man can't get out of bed. How can he go to Hejaz? He bowed his head thinking that he won't be able to go this year either. He is waiting miserably. The Hejaz caravan is on its way to Baghdad. Himit Dede could not go that year either. He said, it's a matter of nasib. It is the divine will. Illness is also a guest. That's what the late brother Fethi would say. Host it well. You know, you may not like the guest, but the one who sent it has all the credit. It's important to host the guests well, not to hurt them. If you hurt guests, the sender of them will be hurt. Beware. A few days after the Hejaz caravan had left for Baghdad, Himit Dede began to recover. He got out of the bed. He was able to walk around the house a little bit. He is sad though. He says, I couldn't go this year either. On the one hand, his heart is content, but on the other hand, he is in deep sorrow. Just then someone knocked the door. Knock, 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 knock. Who is it? Himit Dedi, Himit Dedi, it's me. It's a neighbor. Himit Dedi, get ready quickly. He opened the door. Son, what is it? What are we getting ready for? He said, Himit Dedi. There's a trade caravan heading for Baghdad. You miss the Hejaz caravan, but the trade caravans go a little faster. If you join this caravan, inshallah, you will reach Baghdad. You can also join the Hajj caravan and perform Hajj this year. Himid Dede rejoiced like a child. He kissed his neighbor's eyes and went back inside. He has made his preparations. What can he take with him? He took his prayer rug. He took his prayer beads. He took his ihram. He took his weird turban. He took a few akche of his money. He put it safely in his pocket. He joined the trade caravan, happy like a child, his heart like a child at a feast. When he left, he had supplications in his heart, Allah in his heart, and prayers in his heart. In fact, nothing but Allah enters the hearts of people like him at day day. After a week or ten days of traveling with the trade caravan, he arrived in Baghdad. When the caravan entered the gate of Baghdad, he couldn't wait any longer. He ran and grabbed the first Baghdadi by the collar. Son, where is the Hejaz caravan? I came to catch up with the Hejaz caravan. Son, where is it? The man said, Sir, you're too late. The caravan left three days ago. Hearing this, Himit Dedi fell to his knees. Submissive but sad, a few drops of tears fell from his eyes. He stood up and shook off his clothes. The desert journey is not easy. For about ten days, his clothes and feet were covered with dust and bruises. He said, Ya Nasib. 
my wish is to visit the Baitullah. But the owner of the bait didn't allow it this year either. I've come this far. At least I got half the job done. Next year, inshallah, Ya Nasib, he will join a caravan to return to his hometown. He thought, I'm a mess. Let me go to a city hammam so that I can have a bath. After a while, he found the hammam. Him at Dede will go inside and have a bath. There's a big man standing at the door like a bandit. He said, it's forbidden to enter. I'll just have a bath, son. I've come a long way. No, it's forbidden. The Sultan's men are inside. I can't let you in. Oh, my child. Oh, dear son. Look, I'm already in misery. I will just take a bath and leave. What harm can I do to the Sultan's men? Can't you just let me in? Looking at his face, the guard pitied. He looked around to see if anyone was watching. There was no one around. He said, Okay, sir, come on in. There's a corner back there you can wash yourself. But don't talk to anyone or show yourself to anyone. If word gets out, we're in trouble. Okay, son, may Allah be pleased with you. Himit Dede went inside. He started to wash himself in a corner. In the meanwhile, two people were watching them in the distance. One of them is the Sultan of the time, Harun Rashid, so the story goes. Next to him is his vizier. In those times, the sultans would sometimes appear in the guise of a dervish, a merchant, or a beggar. They would check on the people in disguise. How is everything going? Is everything in order? Do the people need anything? Do they have any problems? So on. When Harun Rashid saw him at Dede entering the hammam, he turned to his vizier. He said, Aren't our men in the hammam? Yes, Excellency. But the guard just let somebody in? Normally he wouldn't but he let that man in. I wonder why. Let's go and see. They both came slowly to the door of the hammam. Again, the guard said, it is forbidden. The sultan's men are inside. The sultan himself stands right in front of him, but he doesn't know. Harun Rashid said, son, we're going to have a bath. I told you it's forbidden. The sultan's men are inside. Son, please. The guard is uncompromising, but Harun Rashid is a smart man. He said, you just let that old man in. Let us in like him. Shh, okay, okay, I will. Just be quiet. Go and wash yourselves in the back, then get out. Harun Rashid and his vizier entered the hammam. As they entered with their hands behind their backs, the sultan entered with a bit of a grumble. He glanced in him at Dede's direction. Poor him at Dede is slowly bathing in a corner. On the outside he is washing, but on the inside, him at Dede's heart is somewhere else. His heart is elsewhere. Him at Dede is in deep sorrow. The sultan looked at him and said, what a cruel man the sultan is. Even his guards close a hammam. He's trying to see how Himid Dede reacts. Himid Dede doesn't even hear. He is alone with the beloved. He is with the beloved now. He doesn't even hear. Harun Rashid realized that nothing would come out of the old man, so he approached him. He said, Assalamu alaikum Erinlar. Himid Dede replied, Wa alaikum assalam, those who have attached their hearts to Erinlar. The vizier said, Oh, there are also those who love those who have attached their hearts to Erinlar. Of course, that didn't happen. Himit Dede said, Wa alaikum as salam, son. The Sultan said, If you like, lie down on the stone and let me scrub your back. Himit Dede looked at him like this. Yes, son, I'd like that. Himit Dede came and slowly lay down on the belly stone. The Sultan of the time put the hammam glove in his hand. He began to scrub Himit Dede's back. He leaned down and whispered in his ear, Sir, Look at the reign of the sultan's men. They close the hammam, this and that. Well, I wonder, if his men are like this, who knows what the sultan himself is like? If we could have been a sultan in this world. Him at Dede laughed from where he was lying. He said, son, what will you do if you become a sultan? May you be the servant of such a sultan that May the sultan of these slaves scrub your back. What was it? To be a sultan or a slave? The reign of sultans lasts until the moment they breathe their last. But there are such slaves of Allah that an endless reign begins for them when they breathe their last breath. I entrust you to Allah.
Simpaş Kızılbük Marmaris presented Biri Bir Gün. <gülüyor>